trial uh, was from November until December. It lasted seven weeks. It was really a big trial and we are expecting a judgment in the next few months. So this is it for now. You were saying earlier that there's been a few hearings already. Could you tell me a little bit about that? Um, the thing is, uh, the first hearing, I wasn't involved in it. Uh, not, like neither as a party, neither as a lawyer. So I really can't talk about it, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm really sorry. No, no, don't be sorry at all. That's totally understandable. Um, but is it just to know, like, is it safe to say, so there's been like two hearings so far. Um, has there been like anything else that the public knows about? So this trial, this hearing was about the trial on Bill 21, the constitutionality of the law, of, the, of this bill. Is this bill, is this law constitutional? This is what happened in November and December. Before, there has been other hearings about the application of the law before the hearing on, um, you know, the legal aspect of the bill. Could you tell me a little bit, um, you know, without having to provide too many details, I guess, how, who you are in this process, like, how have you been involved? So I've been a lawyer in this process in the trial of Bill 21. I've been representing one of the four plaintiffs. Uh, I've been working on the case for a year and a half, almost two years. Could you just tell me a little bit about how um, Bill 21 has affected you, I guess, professionally and personally, if you're willing to talk about that? I have a lot to say about this. So, you know, I graduated from law school in 2016. And my goal as a lawyer was to become a crime prosecutor. I wanted to work in the public sector. This was my, my goal as a lawyer. I didn't want to work in the private field. I always pictures, pictured myself as a lawyer in the public sector, as a Crown Prosecutor. So I made uh, a master's degree in law in, that I finished in 2019. When I finished my master's degree, maybe two months before I finished my, my degree, the bill became a law. So I wasn't able to become a crime prosecutor. And I did this master's degree in criminal law for the only objective, uh, for the only purpose, I'm sorry, to become a crime prosecutor. This was my only purpose for doing this master's. Uh, it was a difficult master. It was, um, I studied longer than my friends. I, I paid more money in order to have this master. And all of this was because I wanted to become a crime prosecutor. But two months before the end of my master's, there was the announcement that the bill became a law. So I wasn't able from this moment, I wasn't able to become a crime prosecutor, to work in the government as a lawyer, as a clerk, as whatever, I couldn't. Like, the thing is, I'm not only not able to work in the government as a crime prosecutor, I'm not able to work as a lawyer in any ministry, in any uh, legal aid uh, a clinic in all of Quebec. So it's not only shutting the door of being a crime prosecutor, it's shutting the door of being a lawyer in Quebec in the, service, in the public service. So this is what happened to me. And when this happened, I was forced, I was forced to work in the private field because I, I can't work in the public uh, field if I have a hijab, if I wear a, a religious symbol. What do you think of this law? Like, do you think that it's, it's infringing upon like human rights? Honestly, when the government decided that they will use the notwithstanding clause, they, they said it, that it was a violation of human rights. Uh, when they use section 33 of the Charter of Rights and Freedom, it's like, it's like they're saying, yeah, we're violating human rights. We're violating the right and freedom of religion. And I think it's not me that says that, it's the government. They said it from the get-go. They said that this law is a violation of human rights, but they had some reasons to, to, to go with this violation. And do you think that it 
prevents a lot of very qualified people such as lawyers but people from other uh, sectors from from contributing to our workforce and economy absolutely it's you know it's about lawyers it's about police officers it's also about teachers you know the biggest like the the biggest population that is concerned and affected by Bill 21 are the teachers there is a lot of teachers who wear religious symbols and they're the one that are the most affected by Bill 21. So, you know, the thing is, Bill 21 is not only affecting people who are already in the workplace, it's affecting students. Let's say law students that wants to become, who wants to become crime prosecutors or students that want to become teachers. So it's affecting all of these people that are in their first year, second year, third year of whatever bachelor they're doing, they are not able to, you know, to, to, to see themselves as teachers in Quebec or lawyers in the public system or police officers. And this is what this law is making, is making a big pause in the life of everyone that is concerned, everyone who wears a religious symbol. And I think this is like actually more sad than the people who are actually affected right now. You know, the students who who had dreams of becoming and they're not able to become. Would you say that um, it, it kind of like ruins, ruins their hope in having the career that they, that they wanted? Absolutely, because I, you know, I'm saying that about myself and I did my master's after I became a lawyer, you know? So I'm, I'm thinking to myself, these people who dreamed all their life to become a teacher, like, you know, Usually it's in high school, if you're lucky that you know what you, what you want to do with the rest of your life. And these people, they decided to become teachers, lawyers, crime prosecutors, police officers. And now they're like, what can I do now? You know, like there's nothing else you can do in Quebec. Let's say you want to become a police officer. What are you going to do? You want to become a crime prosecutor? What are you going to do? So it's, it's really a big stop a big pause in the life of these people and it's not something that we can take lightly it's a big violation of the human rights of these people of their dreams their ambition so thank you for sharing that um just to back up a little bit so you said that you're a lawyer in this case so do you represent the the members of coalition inclusion quebec or or everyone um complaining I represent the teachers union, uh, you know, the Fédération Autonome de l'Enseignement. I represent the teachers union, which is, uh, the, they have 45,000 members all over Quebec. It's all teachers. So this is, uh, this, this is my client in this case. As a result of Law 21, um, what are your plans now aside from, from fighting in this case? Like, I guess, how have you decided to reroute your career? Um, honestly, I can only say that since Bill 21 became a law, I cannot take my rights as granted or my dreams as granted. So uh, I, I was always saying that I wanted to become a Crown Prosecutor, but now I'm like, I don't know. I don't know what I can do and what I can't, you know, it's, it's really a difficult process to actually accept the fact that, oh, I'm not able to become what I've always studied for and what I wanted to do. So now I'm a lawyer in this case, I'm a lawyer in other cases, but I'm not living my dream in Quebec. And this is what I know, but I don't know anything else. It's, um, it's a, it's a difficult uh, realization to be affected by a law like this one. Is there anything that I didn't ask that you think is, I don't know, you would like to say are important for me to consider? I just wanted to say like, what's happening is not only about people who wear religious symbols. It's not about people who are directly affected by the law. This is something that is touching every Canadian the government has weakened the shutter of rights and freedoms for everyone. When they violate human rights in this way, 
it's affecting everyone. It's not only about, you know, these people or these people or these women, the woman who wears a hijab. No, it's about everyone in Quebec and Canada. So it's a much bigger issue than what we can see. And people have to be more involved, not for the sake of Muslim women or for the sake of whoever is wearing a religious symbol, but for the sake of our rights and freedoms. So just my... You know, after the law was adopted in June 2019, there was a first hearing about the application of the law. And this is what went all over the news in the summer 2019. Okay. And then after that, it stopped because, you know, the Supreme Court didn't want to hear the case about the application of the law. And then like after a few months, we had the trial about Bill 20. Okay. And it started in November. It okay. lasted seven weeks until December. So it was like two different hearings, but the first one was about, like you asked the judge, could you not apply the law while we're discussing it in front of a judge? Okay. And it was not accepted, you know? They, they said, no, it has to be applied, even though like the discussion will happen in a year, the law has to be applied. So this is what happened. And now we're waiting for the judgment of the first judge on the case, you know, the, mm -hmm. it's like the first uh, floor of judges, whatever, the superior court. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And then what, it will probably go to the Court of Appeal and then to the Supreme Court. But now we're waiting for, you know, the first instance judgment. Right. We're waiting for it. And hopefully it will come out in the following weeks or months. Okay. And then based on that, like either party can appeal. Exactly. exactly. Okay. Okay. And because it's a constitutional case, like, most likely someone will go in appeal like i'm pretty sure that this is like thing that will go to the supreme court if the law is still is still there so yeah okay but it was yeah it was it was a something in people's head they were hearing like yeah there's a trial there's the hearing and they thought it was happening until the supreme court but it only started in november until december